Welcome to another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. My guest today is Gabriel Garden with another segment of Making Sense with Gabriel. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hi, Gabriel. Welcome back to Making Sense with Gabriel. Hey, Nancy. Good to see you. Today's question, which I'm sure you just can't wait to answer, is are carbs the devil on a plant-based eating plan? Well, I sure hope not because I eat a ton of them. Uh, And number one, I'm super lean. I'm super healthy. And I know you are too. And I think you probably eat a lot of them also. And, um, and I don't have any blood sugar control problems either. My blood sugars are all looking great. And of course, carbs are one of one of the thing, one of the bad wraps carbs get, of course, is that they raise our blood sugars and they'll you know, either cause diabetes or, you know, lead to type two, you know, diabetes or obesity or whatever the case might be. And number one, I tell people, well, all carbs aren't created equal, right? Yes, there's better and worse forms of carbohydrates. And of course, I'd recommend that we lean toward the better sources, the more nutrient dense, the more nutritious sources, the healthier sources of carbs, and we reduce or eliminate the unhealthy sources. So unhealthy sources, first off, white sugar, you know, or any kind of concentrated sweetener, including maple syrup and honey, maple syrup and well, honey, especially on a vegan diet is a no, right. But at least it's a natural sweetener um, that can be minimally processed. And so people will say it's better for blood sugar control, but I still lump it in honey, uh, maple syrup, raw sugar cane, you know, even if it hasn't been bleached and everything like white sugar or more heavily processed, especially white sugar, white flour included in there. These are all simple forms of carbohydrate. They've been processed, all the fiber and the other, you know, the other parts of the plants from which they come have been removed. And when you remove the fiber, say in the sugar cane, or you remove the fiber and the sugar beet that they also use to make sugar, it goes into loads of processed foods and sodas and everything else that are chock full of sugar and sweetener you're losing all the beneficial compounds. You're losing the fiber, which is one of the key nutrients that helps to slow down the absorption of blood sugar into our bloodstreams and prevent those spikes, those blood sugar spikes that then inevitably lead to the blood sugar crashes that leave us feeling lightheaded and, you know, sweaty and or nauseous and, you know, feeling terrible. And then those Great. And then that leads to cravings, of course. And then people go right back to the donut or they go right back for another soda because that crash left them feeling kind of miserable, you know, and then they're like, oh, I need to get that, that hit of dopamine again in my system. And the sugar will bring that right back. So then they go right back for another fix. But we want to avoid that by eating. Of course, we talk a lot about whole plant foods, right? There's nothing wrong with eating a little sugar here and there on occasion drinking a sweet drink or something or some juice, even even if it's a whole natural juice, right? An orange juice has basically, even if there's some pulp in there, which most of the time people probably aren't even drinking some pulp, but that's still such a minimal amount of fiber. If you compare the orange juice to the amount of fiber that you're gonna get in a whole entire orange. And so fruit juices are better than soda, but I'd still encourage people to drink less of those because there it's a very, fractionated kind of highly processed form of eating fruit we want to turn more to the whole fruit in any case because it's got the fiber there and it's got a bunch of other nutrients that are kind of attached to the fiber in the fruit so we want to be eating the whole fruit because that's going to bring down that that blood sugar response our blood sugars won't spike so quick and then we're not going to have those inevitable crashes that lead to lots of cravings and then there's that vicious cycle that happens where you know we go from a high to a crash, we crave, then we go right back to those same foods that give us those quick fixes. We want to avoid those quick fixes with nutrition with, with them whenever possible. And so yes, carbohydrates are not bad. It's just choosing black beans over jelly beans, right? Jelly beans, highly processed, full of sugar, absolutely no fiber. And fiber again, 97 or 98% of Americans aren't even meeting half the minimum requirement based on the US dietary guidelines for fiber consumption every day. So the minimum requirement on average, if you average males and females and different ages and different sizes and everything else, again, every person's needs are gonna be slightly different, but the average fiber need per day minimum, right, is 31 grams. 
And the average American, 97 or so percent of Americans are only getting 15 grams a day, Nancy, 15 grams. And again, fiber only comes in plants. And all plants are gonna have carbohydrates in them. But it's those whole minimally processed forms of plants, the black beans instead of the jelly beans, you know, all these different things. So all of our beans, all of our fruits and vegetables, all of our nuts and seeds, all that stuff. And then all of our whole grains are great, all have carbohydrates in them, but if we're eating them in their whole unprocessed forms, that's good carbohydrate. It's gonna give us good sustained energy throughout the day. Again, carbohydrates are converted to glucose in the system. That's the most simplified version of carbohydrate or sugar that our body uses for energy, right? And without it, yes, we can convert to kind of burning fat for fuel on a ketogenic diet or on a water only fasting diet, which of course you can only do temporarily because you can't survive on water forever. But when the water, when the body's in a fasted state, if you're water fasting, or if the body's on a ketogenic diet, it converts to essentially burning fat for fuel. So we break fat down into ketones and then the body uses ketones for fuel. But I wouldn't ever recommend that long-term, right? It's something that could be done short-term as a keto diet, as if you're you know, using it for some type of a, uh, to treat some type of a health you know, issue, some type of a chronic health issue or acute health issue. Or you could use a water only fasting therapy again to do the same thing, to treat a health issue like chronic high blood pressure, for instance. But that's something that shouldn't last forever. Eventually, people should go back to eating a wide variety of foods, including foods that are rich in carbohydrates. But we want to just again turn to the high quality, natural, minimally processed forms of carbohydrates the beans, the whole grains, the fruits and vegetables, the nuts and seeds. And of course, don't forget the fungus, right? The mushrooms, which are separate from plants, but we usually lump them in there with vegetables. We want to be eating loads of those foods. And then if we have a little bit of processed sugar or maple syrup or whatever it might be, that's certainly not the end of the world. There's nothing wrong with having treats, right? Or enjoying something sweet if you have a sweet tooth. But the majority of our calories and the majority of our food wants to come from this other group of foods, the whole plant foods, which are rich in carbohydrates, but the whole minimally processed ones that come bound with fiber and whole plant foods because fiber is essential. Like I say, most people are only getting around 15 grams of fiber a day and 31 is the, is the minimum. Ideally, we're getting 40 or 50 or 60 or even 100 grams of fiber, depending on how much we eat every day. Because if you look back in time, before we had access to all these processed foods that have essentially little to no fiber in them, some of our ancestors literally would have eaten 100 or more grams of fiber every day. And I can guarantee you, those people didn't have any trouble with obesity. They didn't have any trouble with blood sugar control and type 2 diabetes because fiber is a key to good health. And we only get a lot of fiber if we're eating a lot of plants. And so good news for vegans because we cut out animal products which don't have any fiber in them. And so it's going to mean that we're that much more likely than the average American to meet our fiber needs. And like I say, we want to get way above 31 grams ideally. It's going to help our good gut bugs because our good gut bugs in our, in our large intestine, they thrive on eating all those different types of fiber. And the more different kinds of plants that you get into your week, daily or weekly routine, you're going to be feeding all these different kinds of bacteria in your microbiome, in your, in your large intestine. And that helps to keep our whole body healthy. It helps to keep our gut healthy. And it helps to keep our whole body healthy. And it also helps with those things like obesity, blood sugar control. It helps to curb our appetites so that we don't overeat at meals. It all comes back to fiber, which all comes back to eating more plants. So way to go, vegans. You make a great choice by being vegan because we're just going to increase the amount of plants that we get in our diet because we're eliminating a lot of those fiberless foods. But beware, because a lot of vegans, especially in today's day and age, because we have a vegan replication for every animal product on earth, right? Some of those, yes, they still have some fiber in them, but they're highly fractionated. They're highly processed foods and they're not nearly as health promoting as those whole plant foods that should be the centerpiece and the staple of any vegan diet. So more whole plant foods and you'll be good to go. Nothing to worry about with carbohydrates. You're well, choosing let, the right let me ask you something. Uh, what's 
the favorite, your favorite, you said you eat a lot of car carbohydrates. What's your favorites? I mean, you know, like I say, every plant is going to have carbs in it. And so I eat loads of beans every day. Beans are something that no vegan or no, no person really, because even an omnivore could eat a lot of beans every day and they should. We should be eating loads of beans, right? So think chickpeas, black beans, pinto beans, uh, kidney beans or red beans, white cannellini beans, adzuki beans, tepary beans. Tepary beans are beans that are native to the people of, south, of the southwestern part of this country, right? Um, so the indigenous peoples that have been here for thousands of years, they were eating the tepary bean going back, you know, millennia. And so we want to eat more of all kinds of different beans. And then, like I say, whole grains, those are a wonderful source of complex natural carbohydrates. And so think brown rice, um, think oatmeal, think, or oats, think quinoa, think millet, think rye, think barley, think whole wheat, think teff, think sorghum. The list goes on and on. We should be eating a great variety of all these grains. And then of course, fruit, very rich source of carbohydrate. That some people again want to demonize fruit because it has a simpler form of carbohydrate than the complex, the more complex carbs that we find in things like beans and whole grains. But we want to be eating more fruit because there's a ton of high quality scientific evidence to show that people who eat more fruit actually have better blood sugar control than people who don't. Fruit is highly beneficial for the health uh, throughout our whole entire body, and it's also good for our blood sugar. So that, that, that'll flip it on its head. Some people think, oh, you eat more fruit, that's gonna drive your blood sugar through the roof and you're gonna become a diabetic. That's, an, that's absolutely false. If you eat more fruit in its whole natural form, I'm not talking about orange juice here or apple juice or grape juice. I'm talking about oranges and apples and grapes. If we eat more of those whole fruits, our weight will come down, our blood sugar control will get better. And so, yes, you can't, you can't eat too many whole fruits but you could eat, you could drink too much juice. That's something to be aware of. And then of course our vegetables also have carbohydrates. So again, I, I try to eat as many plants as possible because like I say, diversity is king or queen here. The more king diversity, the better. Diversity is king or queen in every subject matter. So definitely. <laughs> thank you, Gabriel, for being on the Vegan Pulse. Take care. You got it. Thanks for having me, Nancy. Thank you for watching another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Like us on Facebook, check out our website, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Live vegan.